If you've studied at university in the last five to six years, then anonymous messaging apps won't be alien to you. They're exactly what they say on the tin, an anonymous message board where people write silly jokes, stupid remarks, and make fun of people on your campus or in your local area. Probably the most well-known app was Yik Yak, the company once valued at $400 million and used by students worldwide. But a catalogue of errors, both made by the company and its anonymous user base, meant the firm never saw its fifth birthday, crashing and burning just four years after it was founded. In this video, we'll explore the story of Yik Yak, its fast rise to fame, and its even faster failure. Here's how it happened. First, we have to ask, what is Yik Yak? Founded by Tyler Droll and Brooks Buffington at Furman University in 2013, the pair launched Yik Yak as a location-based anonymous messaging app. Funded initially by Atlanta Ventures with $1.5 million from other investors, the app quickly grew in popularity, especially across schools, colleges, and universities around the world, with students sharing gossip with no strings attached. Its success was partly down to its location-based proximity style, meaning that you only saw gossip related to your local area or campus within five miles. Then, similar to Reddit, users would upvote or downvote posts, which were no longer than 140 characters, and the most popular would rise to the top. The app's popularity saw it rise to the top 10 in the App Store in 2013, and reached 1.8 million downloads in the month of September 2014, which paved way for a $10 million funding round, followed by a $60 million funding round led by Sequoia Capital, valuing the app and business at $400 million. But two years later, an app downloads had fallen by over 90%. And there were two reasons which led to this slump in popularity, the users and the business itself. For starters, the users hatched numerous plans making full use of the anonymity. From bullying to hate speech, even bomb and shooting threats which caused schools to be evacuated or placed on lockdown across the USA in 2014. Some of the bullying became so incessant that colleges and schools placed bans on the apps. Some students even faced prison sentences after Yik Yak shared details with the police following threats of school shootings, bombs, and racist remarks. Despite the dark nature of the users, the company also did themselves no favors when it came to combating this behavior, lacking responsiveness and delaying changes. They tried a number of things, effectively removing what users considered to be the best bits, requiring usernames and handles, and in effect, removing anonymity. This was the biggest and most destructive change, as people stopped posting almost overnight. The problem that Yik Yak faced, similar to so many of their competitors, is the reactivity of their actions rather than making proactive steps to improve their user experience and remove harmful content. Some people suggested that if they'd used a similar moderation style to Reddit, even though moderation may have made the platform overly vanilla, it would have been better than the hate speech and bomb threats which ultimately were the beginning of the decline. Thoughts then turned to monetization as one of the main drivers of change. You have to sit back and think, how does an anonymous app actually make money? In the 21st century, as long as you build up a large audience and keep them engaged, there's almost always a chance to monetize it, commonly through advertising. Whilst Yik Yak had a strong product and captive audience, without virility and with myriad changes, they lost pretty much all of their users. Where Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube have succeeded, is understanding the user base and making sure they spend as much of their time on the platform. Yik Yak, it seems, did not understand their user base and let go of what made their app truly successful. Whilst Yik Yak wasn't the first and won't be the last, it has set a trend in the app world, which has seen a number of copycats pop up like After School, Candid, Nearby, Whisper, and Yodel to name a few. But once the popularity fades, what happens next? Since its core user base is mainly students, once the next big thing steals the attention, most of these apps will suffer the same fate as Yik Yak, if they haven't already. Despite Yik Yak's meteoric decline, an MIT study suggested that actually, posts from an anonymous source were only slightly more likely to be vulgar than tweets with a Twitter account attached. Less than a 1% difference. But in the end, the company with a $400 million valuation was eventually poached by Square, the payment company who bought the intellectual property and the remaining engineers for just a million dollars. The bullies and hate speech won out in the end, 
but to be fair to Yik Yak, it lasted longer than most anonymous platforms. And at the end of the day, it was just a tool, and how it's then used is out of the company's control. But just four years later, in August 2021, the app resurfaced on the iOS app store in the USA after new owners purchased the rights to redevelop the app in February 2021. We're bringing Yik Yak back because we believe the global community deserves a place to be authentic, a place to be equal, and a place to connect with people nearby. These new owners are doing things differently by taking a strong approach to hate speech and discrimination. The community guardrails suggest they're against all forms of hate speech and have suggested that users will be immediately banned in a one-strike policy. Speaking of users, they'll also have to provide a phone number and go through an onboarding sequence warning them of the strict new policies. There are new features and resources in a stay safe section, warning users about the issues with ride sharing and bullying, among other things. Another mental health section suggests users should report bullying posts and any yak receiving five or more downvotes will be automatically removed, or so they say. Whilst we don't yet know the identity of the new owners, they're trying to relaunch what was a popular app with a cult following, this time in a more careful and considered way. Whilst only available in the USA currently, if they can master international expansion, many more fans lay in wait. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.